We're up here on the ice in the Gulf of St. Lawrence off the coast of Newfoundland, Canada. Every year in the month of March, harp seals haul out to give birth. The ice offers them protection from sharks, orcas, and other natural predators. And for a million years or so, this was a sanctuary for baby seals and their moms, who had no other defense but the ice. Now, harp seals are a big deal to environmentalists for several good reasons. They're adorable, they're defenseless, and they're getting killed for no good reason. Most are here to protest and harass the next group to arrive, the seal hunters. The seal hunters are mostly unemployed fishermen put out of work by the ban on cod fishing. They can't afford private jets and helicopters. They arrive in their fishing boats following the path carved through the ice by huge Canadian icebreakers. The icebreakers cost tens of thousands of dollars a day to operate, paid for by the Canadian taxpayers. The government seems willing to spend the money because they're the ones who banned fishing in the first place. Say the boys to make a noise when we come over the sea. We get right drunk, we roll the floor, we have a jubilee. We get right drunk and full of beer, we roll all over the floor. And when our rent it is all spent, we go to sea for more. And on board is a company of Canadian Mounties. They've come along to arrest anyone who dares interfere with the seal hunt. Adding up the cost of fuel, icebreakers, and police protection, sealing is one of the most expensive occupations in the world. Endlessly. And someone's got to put a stop to it. Number one on the Mounties' enemy list is Paul Watson and the crew of our big ship, the Farley Mowat. The Farley Mowat is a North Sea trawler with a reinforced hull capable of pushing through pack ice. It's no icebreaker, but it's tough enough to get us there. So why would anyone want to bother the seal hunters? Well, while one group likes to hug and kiss the baby seals, the other, the hunters, like to knock their heads off. We're the boys to make the noise when we come over the sea. We get right drunk, we roll on the floor, we have a jubilee. We get right drunk and full of beer, we roll on the floor. And when our rent it is all spent, we go to sea for more. We do what we can to stop the slaughter. One year, we sprayed the seals with a harmless dye, making their pelts worthless to anyone but the original owners. Painting seals proved effective, so much so that the Canadian Parliament passed the Marine Mammal Regulation 33, subsection 1, specifically targeting us. Canadian Coast Guard, this is the Farley Mullet. Return your call. Want to inform you that you're in violation right now of the Marine Mammal Regulations 33, uh, subsection 1. The Seal Protection Act, as it's now known, bars anyone from approaching to within a half mile of a seal. Unless they intend to kill it. The Seal Protection Act protects the hunters, not the seals. Once the seal has been relieved of its innards and is nothing but a pelt, then what? Because of all the protests over the years, the sale of pelts is banned in Europe and America. The profit from other markets doesn't even cover the cost of the fuel the hunters burn to get up here, and certainly not the cost of running the icebreakers. So why do they do it? I'll tell you why. It's a blood orgy. They smear their faces with blood, get drunk, and kill for the sheer pleasure of killing. They know perfectly well what the slaughter looks like to the outside world, and they don't like being seen as bloodthirsty goons to their wives and kids watching on TV. Fuck you! So they do what they can to smash our cameras before we can get back to our ship with the footage. Hey! Fucking go home! Go home! Hey! They look absolutely ridiculous. Nothing wrong with that. We actually encourage it. Makes good TV. You fuck off, you fuck Their English is limited to two words, which they repeat over and over. Fuck you, you fucks! 
They like to punch out women. Not nice, but there's a certain logic to hitting those who are not likely to hit back. Same reason they hunt seals, I suppose. Fucking go home, you fucking seal-hugging sons of bitches! Uh, Lisa got punched in the stomach. Um, Jerry got punched in the face. I got almost hack a pick to the head right onto my camera. Um, I got you got hit also? Yeah, he wanted to show me that he's, he dares to, okay. to beat a woman up. Let's get, uh, who, who, who got any photographs? You got me come out. Uh, eight yeah. sealers assaulted our crew and hit uh, eight of them uh, with clubs and hack a picks injuring a couple of them, and to the amount of police responded by arresting our crew and not the people who assaulted. Most of the crew made it safely back to the ship. Some were arrested and taken on board the icebreaker. Charged with approaching a seal to within less than a half mile without killing it. They were taken back to Newfoundland and released on $1,500 bond. The season ends. And one has to ask, did we really accomplish anything? We did get pictures, and we released them to the world press. The bad news is, years have passed and the hunt continues. The question everyone asks is why. There is no real market for seal fur, so there must be another reason why the Canadian government spends hundreds of thousands of dollars every year on icebreakers. And God knows how much on the salaries of all those Mounties flown in to enforce the half-mile law. What possible reason? My theory is this. Every year, the local economy gets an estimated $20 million boost from eco-tourists and protesters who pour in from around the world all needing lodging, food, fuel, and helicopters to transport them to the ice. Protester accommodation is now a highly profitable industry for locals. So with all their good intentions, the eco-tourists are pumping new life into this gruesome pastime. To quote Pogo, we have met the enemy and he is us. As to the seals, cute, aren't they? Take a long last look.